Number 18. Calculate the pH and the pOH of each of the following solutions at 25 degrees Celsius for which the substances ionize completely. And then we have letter D. So in this case, we have to find the pH of the pOH of 0 0.0031 molarity CaOH2. Now, they did give us a little hint here. They said that the substance will ionize completely. Ionize completely just means that this compound, CaOH2, when placed in water, an aqueous solution, it will break down 100% into its ions. Now, they might not give you that little hint on the test or quiz, so we just have to know that CaOH, when you see this compound, it should be ringing bells in your mind because this is a strong base, Sb. And I wrote down all the, the strong bases on Earth. There's six of them. And CaOH2 falls right into this category. So any time that you see any one of these six, they will always ionize completely and you will perform what's going to happen, basically, the, the steps, what's going to happen with calcium hydroxide, which is CaOH2. So now we just have to write down, in terms of a balanced equation, what it means to ionize completely. Well, we have Ca. OH2, and if I just grab this, I'll move this over. I'm going to draw a single arrow because it's going to break down 100% into its two ions. But now we just have to figure out, well, what are the two ions? This goes all the way back, right, to, to you know, the first chemistry in which we made compounds and we broke them down. Here is my hydroxide, OH minus is hydroxide. So the cut has to be here, because hydroxide is a polyatomic ion. So this breaks down into calcium, which is in group 2, so that's a 2 plus ion, plus OH minus. Now, remember, whenever we write an equation, we just have to make sure that it's balanced. I have one calcium and one calcium, but here I have two OHs. So I just have to say, how many OHs do I have? I have two of them, so I do have to write a 2 in front of here. Now I'm ready to go. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say, okay, they gave me this information in the beginning. They told me what the concentration of CaOH2 was, so 0 0.0031 molarity. But if something breaks down 100% or ionizes completely, that means that at equilibrium, at the end of the day, you're not going to have any of this left. All of this is going to transfer into the two ions. So we do have to find out what those numbers are, right? We have to find out how much Ca2 plus and how much OH minus. Well, we do that by looking at the coefficients. Now it's a one to one to two ratio. So since CaOH2 and Ca2+, plus, they're the same, it's a 1 to 1, that means if whatever number I have here, it's going to be the same, 1 to 1. So if I started off with 0 0.33, 0 0.0031 molarity, that's what the molarity is for the calcium. But now, it's a 1 to 2 for the hydroxide. So whatever number I have for the calcium, it's going to be 2 times that amount. That's what a 1 to 2 relationship means. So in essence, I'm going to take the 0 0.0031 and times it by 2 because of that 2 in there. And that's going to be the new concentration. So 0 0.0031 times 2 is 0 0.0062 molarity. Now remember, we want to find the pH and the pOH. So, now comes all these formulas. Now, I'm talking about a strong base here. I only see blues here, right? And if I just write, you know, this is a blue, right? OH minus is blue. So, I can't be in acid territory. I'm not even looking over here. But maybe I can figure out what equation I'm going to use here. Remember, keep in mind that I want to just find the pH and the pOH. Well, I can use this one. 
I can find out the pOH first because I just found out the hydroxide concentration. And this is the only number now that I care about, is the 0 0.0062 for the OH. I don't care how much calcium was made because that's not going to get me to the uh, pOH. Only the hydroxide will get me to the pOH. So pOH equals negative log of the hydroxide concentration, which was two times the amount, 0 0.0062. And now let's find out that pOH. So negative log of 0 0.0062. Now pOH and pH sig figs are a little weird. Basically the total amount of sig figs here is going to be the sig figs after the decimal. So since there's two total, you have to have two after the decimal for the pOH. So it'd be 2.21, two after the decimal because there's a total of two here. And now that's one of my answers. So I found the pOH, check. Now, how am I gonna get the pH if I know the pOH? Ah, it's this one, pH plus pOH is 14. Now star this one up because you're only allowed to use this equation if you're at room temp, which is 25 degrees Celsius. And they did tell us that. If you're not at 25 degrees Celsius and they give you a wacky KW value, you can't use that formula. So now let's go for it. pH plus pOH equals 14. And if I just want to solve for pOH, right, Another way of saying the same formula would be 14 minus the P. Actually, oh, we want to solve for pH. Good catch there. So pH equals 14 minus the pOH. So I'm solving for the pH. I'm just going to put in the pOH value and let's go for it. pH equals 14 minus 2.21. 14 minus 2.21, I get 11.79. And on the pH scale, it's a really, really, really high number, which signifies that it's basic. And on the pOH scale, it's a really, really, really low number, which also signifies that it's basic. And there you go, guys. I really hope this helped. Let me know in the comments, subscribe to the channel, and I hope you guys have a great day. Let's keep studying hard. And I will talk to you all in later lessons. Bye-bye.